Welcome to Devlog 2 of Death Inc. In this devlog we are going to be creating an infinite randomly generated offers that our player is going to have to fight through to take down the evil corporation that owns it. Last devlog we created the basics of our game, player movement, enemy pathfinding and a couple of guns. However since our game is going to be a roguelike, we really need an interesting randomly generated environment that our game is going to take place in. Luckily our game is set in an office building which has a built in structure called Called floors. The higher you go, the more difficult the game becomes. So, for example, floor 1 will be extremely easy, floor 5 will be quite a challenge, and floor 10 will be almost impossible. But to move between floors, we have to ride an elevator, not only giving our player a break from combat, but also allowing us to seamlessly generate the next floor. But for now, we need to focus on actually generating these floors, and I decided I was going to try to create my own unique system for this, giving us a lot of control, but also making it like 10 times more difficult. And I now think this might have been a mistake, but because this devlog series isn't just about the successes of my game, but also the failures, I'm going to show you how it went anyway. To make sure I wouldn't get overwhelmed, I divided this huge task into a couple of smaller challenges. By the end of these challenges, we should have a completed system. The first challenge was to spawn two rooms connected by a corridor. I thought this was going to be relatively easy. We just spawn two rooms somewhere close to each other and create a corridor to connect them. However, when I started thinking about how I wanted this system to actually work, this quickly fell apart. You see, the approach I want to use for this game is that I create a lot of different rooms by hand and then let the game randomly pick one of them to place on the floor. And I wanted to do the same thing for the corridors, meaning they are all a predetermined size and we can't just put them wherever we want. So our early approach doesn't work, but what we can do is spawn a room, then attach a corridor to it and then spawn a second room at the end of that corridor. This should work perfectly, allow us to create rooms and corridors of any size we want as long as they have these attachment points, which I call docks or entrances. And after a lot of frustrating hours programming, this is now working. But to go into a bit more detail on how exactly this works, we're going to move on to challenge 2, which is spawn a large number of rooms connected by corridors. I had actually accounted for a bigger number of rooms in the original code, so all I need to do was change the number of rooms I wanted to spawn, and it was technically working. We start, just like before, by spawning a random room. After that, we get a list of all the dogs attached to that room, and we pick one of random that we want to put a corridor on. To find a corridor that will fit there, we randomly select one of our corridors, and if it has a dock that will fit our selected entrance, we spawn it in. And if it doesn't, we just repeat until we find one that fits. Then at our spawned corridor's other dock, we spawn a second random room, which will then repeat the cycle until we have our desired number of rooms. However, when we implement this, there is an obvious flaw. Currently, we aren't accounting for rooms or corridors that overlap, meaning you get some hideous floor generations. Now there's two things I could do here. One, I could slow down the generation process and at each step wait to see if there are any collisions and if there are, delete our previously spawned room or corridor and try again. But there's also option two, just brute forcing it. Let it generate the entire floor, see if there's any collisions or overlap and if so, just start over. And we can do this literally hundreds of times a second, making it quite fast too. Now I should probably go for the first option, it's objectively better and way more efficient. So obviously I went with the second option because I like the idea of generating thousands of variants of a floor until we stumble into a configuration that we like. I know it's stupid, but it's my system, so just let me have a little fun. Anyway, our pretty inefficient way of generating a floor is working, which brings us to challenge 3, add branch off paths. To make our system less linear, I want to add smaller paths that branch off from our main path, giving our player an opportunity to get more loot, or maybe even a better gun. And the implementation of this into our system is relatively simple. We start off by choosing a random room in our already generated main path, we then check if it has a dock available, and if it does, we choose one at random to attach a corridor to. We then go through our system of room corridor room corridor again until we have our desired branch length, at which we check if we need to build another branch, and if we do, it all starts over again. Of course, all the variables in the system can be changed however we like, whether we want a lot of main path rooms and little to no branches, a smaller main path with some really long branches, or a long path with long branches. However, all these changes will obviously have an 
an impact on generation speed, as some combinations are easier to generate than others. Also, you might have noticed that I gave the rooms a different colour based on their function. The green room is the starting room, where the player will be spawned in. The red room is the end room, where the player will go to the next level, and the orange rooms are the branches. Not only does it make it a lot clearer what is going on, it will also allow me to create certain rooms for certain functions. For example, the start and end rooms having an elevator. Okay, so we now have the main programming side of the system done, which is good because at this point, I went on vacation. An entire week of relaxing on the beach, drinking cool drinks on the beautiful blue skies, and with an infinite number of popsicles for me to eat. It was an absolute paradise on earth. Just kidding. I actually stayed in a small cabin in the woods and it rained a lot. And if you think that sounds quite peaceful, no, it was in a park with hundreds of other accommodations and there were kids, lots of kids. So not very peaceful. But anyway, I didn't have access to my computer for an entire week, meaning I wasn't able to work on the game. But I was able to do some drawing on my laptop, and I created some objects for us to place in our game. And after coming back and importing all the assets into the game, we now have a basic version of a desk with nothing on it, which can be destroyed by shooting it. And I think it's quite satisfying to look at, just watching it fall apart. We also now have an office chair to go with it, and unlike our desk, this one gets destroyed really easily. Next up, we have a water dispenser, which has probably the best breaking animation out of all of them. It only needs a single shot to break, but when it does, it falls over and spills water everywhere, which I just think looks awesome. However, the next one is in my opinion the best out of all I've made. I called it a copy machine in all the files, but I now realise that Painter would have been a way better name. But anyway, this machine can be destroyed just the same, but pieces of paper fly out of it when you do, making it by far the most satisfying object to destroy. And last, and probably least, we have what I think is called an easel. However, in Dutch, easel literally means donkey, so that word doesn't sound right to me at all. But besides the name, this one is really simple. It gets destroyed in one shot and has a quick but nice looking break animation. But I think those are enough objects for now, and I think it's time to continue on to the last step to complete this system. Design and create rooms and corridors to spawn. This was by far the most difficult step in the entire process. You see, designing a room that is both bland and decent looking is really hard, and the weird perspective of this game made it even harder. Just look at the shadows of our objects and how much you can see of the side of them. It's a really, really difficult perspective to work with, and according to that perspective, our walls need to be really high, but that just doesn't look good. So I tried something that I think works pretty well. I cut the wall in half. Now, when something is up against the wall, they stick out slightly, and I think this looks pretty good. However, I'm not 100% sure I want to stick with this design, or even this perspective for the entire development, and so to save time, I only made a single room. It's really quite big, has a large pillar in the middle, and has eight different entrances. I also made two corridors to go with it, which are both incredibly simple. And after I put them in the game, everything obviously broke. So I did some bug fixing, and I got it to work properly. We now have our first actual floor generated. But currently it's looking a bit empty, so I changed the room to have some objects in it. I also added four enemies to the room, because we can't just have a floor with just desk and printers on it. Although that does actually sound like a good idea for like a special floor or something. Maybe even with the objects coming to life and shooting at you? This actually sounds really awesome. But anyway, if we're even going to add that, it's not going to be anytime soon. For now, we're going to stick to the basics, just like we did in this devlog. And even though there's a good chance I will end up changing the system at a later date, as it's very inefficient and incredibly tedious, this was a valuable learning opportunity for me, and it will massively change the development of this game moving forward. The code is an absolute mess, but I'm still really proud of it, as with no outside help, I managed to create some Thing that works. It doesn't work well, but it does work. So that's it for this devlog. I really hope you still enjoyed it and that you'll stay to see where this game goes next, even though sometimes things won't exactly go to plan. But hey, that's just part of the process.